The Small Business Show, episode 172 for Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018. Greetings, folks. Welcome back to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are BFA by, for, and about small business. <laughs> Sponsors for this episode include Text Expander. We're at textexpander.com slash podcast. You get 20% off your first year. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? I am good. It's been a crazy couple of weeks, busy, and uh, I'm really happy that we're talking about the tools that we use to make our lives, make our businesses run as efficiently as we can, even when we're busy, Yeah, especially when we're busy. And I think that, yeah, and, and that's a, a, to expand on your point about your life being busy. These We're, we're going to talk about these tools today, and I think they make you know, your personal life better as well. Right. Because mm -hmm. a lot of it's automation or, you know, stuff. And, uh, you know, there's definitely this bleed through, uh, into your crossover into your personal stuff, but uh, bleed through man, we're yeah. entrepreneurs. There's a difference between business and personal life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I posted in the small business support group, uh, recently at businessshow.co slash Facebook. And I p did this post on Friday, uh, on, on a Friday. And it was, you know, uh, the average person's like, it's Friday with the big exclamation point, you know, but the entrepreneur, the business owner is like, it's Friday <laughs> with a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? I, you know what? I, it, that, that actually happened to be this morning. I had a back and forth email chain going with a, a customer and we were, you know, back and forth quickly doing stuff. And we sort of got to the end of, of the questions, you know, like I was asking some questions and she was answering me and I almost wrote her and said, awesome. Well, I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend. And then I, <laughs> before I sent the email, I realized yeah, it's Wednesday. And so I, I wrote her that, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I said, wow. And then I said, yeah, I need sleep. And she wrote me back and said, so happy Wednesday, you know, and uh, she wrote me back. She said, yeah, that would have been an awful trick. <laughs> like, yeah, but it wasn't a trick. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Have yeah, no idea. Yeah, so no did. idea. And, and so, yeah. So as we, as we talk about these, these are, you know, I, I titled my notes here, tools that we can't live without yeah, uh, you know, totally. for, to manage our businesses and our lives really. Um, I, I think that's a really good, a good point that, uh, and also, you know, we always say here on, on the small business show that, Owning a, a small business or, or multiple small businesses, you don't have any freedom, but what you have is flexibility. And I think that as I went down my list of things, uh, I, I just saw that trend as like, well, that, that really gives me flexibility to yeah. do X or allows me to do my stuff anywhere, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's a, a part of the theme today. It's the, but why theme. don't we jump right in? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. You, you want to start? You want I will. To start? I'll start us. And I'm going to start us pr pretty deep in the pool with something that I've been using. Uh -oh. for. Tw that's okay. For 20 years okay. called FileMaker. Um, FileMaker, oh. it, you know, <laughs> it. and, and it's the, 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 here's the thing. It's the last thing I put on my list because I almost forgot about it. And yet I use FileMaker every single day. We so FileMaker is at its core a database program, right? But yep. you can build your own databases. They have and they're up to version 17 now, <clears throat> which just came out and it's fantastic. They've got some templates or, or pre-built kind of starting points uh, that are fantastic. But you, the great part about FileMaker is you can customize it. And it is built to be customized. In fact, the databases that we use, we built out of whole cloth because there were no, you know, 20 years ago. It was just like, OK, download FileMaker and figure it out from there. And it wasn't quite like that, but they didn't have sure. the starting points. And uh, and that's the thing. So we have our like for Backbeat Media, we have our contacts database, our, ad, you know, our, our advertisers database. And then connected to that, we have the people that work for those companies and notes connected to that. And all of our insertion orders, every single insertion order we've ever sent out. So contracts for people to buy ads are called insertion orders, but that's just contracts for people to buy ads. Every one of them is in that database. And then hung off of that are the billing records for each of those. So we track the entirety of our business there. 
And uh, and then actually I, I export the data to QuickBooks so that I can, you know, manipulate the accounting and sync with the bank accounts and stuff. But uh, but it all happens in FileMaker, including our credit card billing and our PayPal billing, all that stuff. And it really isn't that difficult to put it all together. It, in fact, it's super easy. And we do bulk mailings from FileMaker and targeted like, you know, we can say, all right, we want to find people that have these criteria and, you know, it comes out and does it. And then we can send out our mailings and things like that. So it's just it, like it. we would have had we would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions, yeah. um, you know, on CRM systems if we hadn't just uh, gone with FileMaker from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would add it's on my list, too. Uh, and, y- y- you know, it is a database program, but it's kind of built for non-database people. Thank you. In yes. the sense that as a yeah, as a business owner, there is a tremendous amount of modification that you can do to it. So that is what separates, in my opinion, FileMaker from other uh, relational databases that you can you know, do online or download or whatever. It's all graphical. Most, you can drag things yeah. around and configure things without That's being right. a programmer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most applications force you to modify the way your behavior, but you can easily modify FileMaker's behavior to just do anything. I mean, any, anything you want to track and you want to deal with, you want to sell, you want to collect data, I mean, you can manage it in FileMaker and there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of example databases that you can find online, some of them free, some of them very you know inexpensive, and then bring into FileMaker and then modify to fit your needs. Even the solutions that come with the, the FileMaker are easily modified. So yeah. if you want to add a button or add a field or stuff that's, uh, I mean, there is just nothing like it. And, uh, as well, I've used it for 30 plus years and I've run businesses that shipped, you know, thousands of items per month uh, and all through FileMaker. You know, I had no idea. Website I, if I you don't know that to. you and I have ever had the FileMaker discussion before. This is fascinating to me. I don't think so. I didn't know you used yeah. FileMaker. That's which is crazy. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, I, but we bought a company one time and, and, and I used FileMaker a little bit when I was getting started and, sure. because it was an Apple product, right? Yeah. And, it's and I still, believe they still own it's still FileMaker, a whole, right? It's a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple, but it works. They have, they have Windows apps yeah. and, uh, and of course, Mac apps. And while we're talking about apps, they also now, and I say now, but it's been in existence for a number of years, have mobile apps. So you can like tap, I it's great. We keep yeah, our great. our Mac Observer um, uh, contacts database in there, right? So people that we talk to about, you know, we talk about, you know, in fact, FileMaker is in there, right? And anytime we yeah. do an article or anything about FileMaker, we want to let them know. So we have like all the contacts. Anytime somebody, you know, a new uh, person starts working there or whatever, we just log them in our database. And what's great is I can be at a trade show or, you know, press event or something and start walking up to, you know, a group of FileMaker people and be like, oh, crap, I can't remember that person's name. I know it used to be so-and-so, but he left. Who is it? I can look on my phone very, very quickly and be like, oh, that's right. It's Tim now or whatever. It's not Tim, but, you know, that like, there you go. And you're just right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You keeps your data right where you need it. It's it's fantastic. Can you tell I'm excited about FileMaker? Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. I mean, we could talk the whole show about it and yeah. and uh, th- it those guys should be thing. sponsoring this show because, yes, yeah, because it's, it's it it is phenomenal, you yeah. know. Um, all right. So so uh, I'm going to go now. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to combine these two things because I have a feeling this show could run really long. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the Mac changed my life. You know, I had no I had no uh interest in getting into the computer business or anything like it. I, my background is in uh, landscape architecture. and uh, But the Mac changed my life when I was in college. And I mean, I cannot put too fine a point on it. And it enabled me to represent myself and my fledgling, you know, landscape architect and construction business in an entirely different way and maybe look way smarter than I, than I ever was or ever will be and allowed me to charge a lot more money as I was just a kid. And, uh, you know, I was shocked that people would write us these checks because everything, it, once everything looked professional and everything, and I did that on my Mac. Yeah. So, you know, one of the most important, the most important tool I would say for me 
is my MacBook Pro. And it's it's been, you know, all kinds of various iterations over the years of whatever Mac I've been running. But having this computer next to me and enabling me to to do all this stuff, I mean, it, it is mind boggling. And and then I would add my iPhone to that. Those two pieces of hardware from Apple uh, have really tr- changed my life. You know, if, if you've listened to the show a long time, about a year and a half ago, or about a year ago, I guess, I... I want to do an experiment to start a business that I could just run from my phone right? because I always have my phone with me. Remember that? I do. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so I did it and it's worked and it's great. And now it's another revenue stream for me. And I, I, I do the whole thing on my phone and it, you know, uh, we'll talk about that again, but those two pieces of hardware, I, I cannot stress enough. And of course I run FileMaker on both of those. Uh, but, uh, you just can't, I can't stress enough how important those two things have been in my business, even in my personal life. Cool. Dramatic. Um, I will combine, well, sort of. Uh, Email is really important to me. Okay. And Mm. there are two things that I use that make my life so much better. One of them, because I'll start with this because we're on the the Apple train here, is a a Mac product. And it's it's a a product for the Mac. It's not from Apple. But... um, it, because I use a Mac, that's that's how it works. And it's a plugin for mail called Mail Act On. And what it mm. does, it does lots of different things. But the things that I use it for are uh, are twofold. Number one, it allows me to sort my mail with keystrokes. So you can as- assign keystrokes to rules, which means if I want to file things or or do things with messages, like if I know I want to move this to say, you know, we get an email from one of you folks at feedback at business show dot co. I want to put it in my business show to follow up folder or whatever I can. Uh, actually, if it comes into feedback at business show dot co, it automatically goes that to, to that folder for me. But sometimes people email me directly and it's a question for the show. So I want to put it in that folder and I want it to be unread. Well, you know, I hit control B because that's the keystroke I've assigned and boom, it marks the messages unread and puts it in that folder for me so that when I am going to look at business show, uh, you know, small business show emails, boom, there they are. And they're organized by unread and everything is exactly as I want. So that's one. And it just being able to do that from the keyboard without having to click, you know, the mouse three times to do it saves a lot of time. Uh, so that's one, Great. one thing mail act on does. Another one that I use it for is delaying the sending of an email. How many times have you hit wow. send and thought, Oh, Crap, you know, and you don't yeah. think it right away. Yeah. You think it yeah. 10 seconds later, right? And it's like, oh, I could have said this or I could have said that. So I have all of my email with this plugin set to send one minute after I click send. You could set it to go 10 minutes ah, after. That's great. And sometimes yeah, yeah. I do. That's brilliant. So yeah, sometimes I will like with a certain email, it'll be like, I think I'm done with this. I'm I'm okay with sending it, but I'm going to set it to 10 minutes. And that way, if, you know, inspiration strikes, I can I can come back and revisit it. So th- th- that is a huge one for me is being able to do that. Uh, similarly cool. with email, uh, the, the next thing on my list is SaneBox. Now SaneBox is a, a cloud service that actually logs into your email for you so that you have to trust them because you're giving them access to your email box. So like that's, you know, right up front, if you're not going to trust uh, some company's automated servers to log into your email sure. box, you don't use this. I've been trusting them for, I think, five years now, uh, but a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's so much so that if they went away, I would if, if no one else was doing what they were doing, I would I would stop and, and build a product that does this uh, because not not that I could do it as well as they could, but I need something like this. So they look at every message that comes into your inbox and. If it's a mailing list, it automatically uh, moves it to your, uh, you know, to a, a folder that they call sane news, right? Because it's a newsletter, right? And if it's like receipts and things like that that are not overly urgent, it moves it into a folder called sane later. But the cool part is you can create your own folders and in an automated sense, create your own rules. So I can take... Uh, like if it moves something into my sane news folder and I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Everything that like that 
one I want in my inbox, all I do is move it from the news folder to my inbox. It's watching what I do. It sees that I've done that. The next one of those that comes in, it leaves it in my inbox. It auto trains itself. Yeah, that's awesome. And I can create yeah, other folders too. So I have folders that, that didn't come with it. Like I have one called Sane Watched, which is just me sort of like a second priority thing. This way, my inbox is really clean and only there with messages that are sent to me. And then I've got these other mess, these other mailboxes that are kind of tiered. And I'll tell you, it's way more efficient to go through your email um, you know, to go through like a bunch of newsletters when you, that's all you're doing, they're not intermingled with these other things. You can do it much more efficiently. So that's one thing I use Sanebox for. The other is reminders. When I send an email out and I know that I want to like come back around to it, like I've organized every Wednesday morning is when I come in and I go through all of my, like all the pending sales that we have and things like that and just follow up on them. So anytime I'm sending an email out, doesn't matter what day it is, what time it is. I BCC Wednesday, 9am at sanebox.com. And that then resurfaces that email in my inbox on Wednesday at 9am. Obviously if it's already been dealt with great, no problem. And if it hasn't, Boom. There it is. It reminds me. I don't have to create any other system. I don't have to, you know, ask FileMaker to remind me. Sanebox just does it and puts it right back in my inbox. It's pretty cool. So I. It, that it, is cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly recommended. That's, yeah, that's good. And both those products I don't use. So I'm very excited about <laughs> hearing about them. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I think that that's really great. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, OK, so on a, another one I think might be on both of our lists that we've talked about a lot on the show is text expander. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, the fact that text expander has become a sponsor has nothing to do with the, this is a product that I've used. And I think Dave has used for decades, uh, or at least however long they've been around. But, yeah. um, the, the automation that text expander brings to not only you personally, uh, but your business, your employees, um, all your communication, your customer service, I, I can't understate how powerful it is when, you know, I'm, I'm a control freak, uh, as f especially when it comes to messaging to the customer and the tone we set with the customer and the, the I guess the voice that we use as a company, I want that to be the same. I want the customer experience to be the same, whether they talk to me or whether they talk to somebody we've just hired, uh, you know, and only been with the company for a month. And one of the ways that I've been able to ensure that has happened over the years is with Text Expander because I'm involved in creating how these uh, e e email responses in this case are going to be used or, you know, how the customer is going to be handled. And, and you can create, you can script that and create these responses and put them at the fingertips of everyone in your company. Uh, so, you know, that when a happens, B is going to be the follow-up and there should not be too much uh, variation there, just enough to personalize it a little bit. Um, and, and, and I love it. And it's save, it is such a time saver. If you're constantly writing the same things over and over and over again, dumping them into text expander and, and putting a keystroke next to it. it it's fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. So yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, it is, they are the sponsor of this episode. They, it, it is serendipitous that this happened, uh, that, that it worked out this way. It was really not planned. In fact, you, you built the schedule for the, the, uh, the topics of the show. And, and then I said, Oh, as it turns out, text expanders, the sponsor of that one. That's, that's, you know, that's perfect. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so I, I do want to, uh, talk through a couple of things. They gave us a great list of ideas for snippets that you might send regularly and that text expander would help you with. They include directions, right? How many times have you done driving directions? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how come I don't already have a snippet for this, but to be perfectly honest, I don't, I will, I'll fix this now. Mailing addresses, meeting agendas, website URLs, like you said, Shannon, common sales responses, common support replies, reference requests how many times have you asked somebody for a reference request and you oh, yeah. you, you pour over how you're going to word that email because frankly it's really important you know it's like you want to get that right well once you get it right the first time save it as a snippet you know and then yeah and then great. the one that that we all should do but i don't and i i will start is names that you find difficult to spell so 
Really, really great stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Shannon said, uh, you know, you can share the snippets with your team and keep them all up to date together. Uh, And that's the power and the magic of snippets and and just a couple of examples of what you can do. So check them out. As I said at the beginning of the episode, textexpander.com slash podcast is where you can go. You sign up there and you will save 20 percent off your first year because uh, because you're a listener here to the small business show. And make sure you let them know that you heard about it here. We'd really appreciate that. And they would, too. So our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode very serendipitously. Yes, it is. Hi, man. Yeah. You're up. Oh, I'm up. up okay. I think. Um, yeah, because I pulled that one out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Synology. Um, the Synology Disk Station. Uh, oh. uh, I have found this thing to be uh, in, crucial, uh, integral to what we what we do here. So the, the disk station is at its core a, a network attached storage device, which is to say that it's a device with a bunch of hard drives in it, therefore has lots of storage, but is also a computer. And it sits on your network. It's got, you know, you plug it in via Ethernet and it's got hard drives. But there's a computer in there because it has to be able to share the data that's on the on those drives with the, the rest of the network. And what what's really cool is and they've really like taken this to another level. Uh, they've got some services that that they offer packages, they call them. But it's like you're installing apps on this box. And remember, this is a box that's on your network. It's turned on all the time. And so it's a server is really what it becomes. And two of them that I have started using uh, like all the time, number one, they call, they call it, well, it's the name. It's the name is changing. The service used to be called cloud station. Now it's called Synology drive. And what it is, is it's your own private Dropbox. So if you've used Dropbox, you have a little app on your Mac or your windows machine, And there's a folder that's synced to the cloud and all your other computers. And then you can share data with other people, but it's just synced and everything works magically. But you have to pay Dropbox for, you know, more than whatever, two gigs of storage, whatever you use with them. Yeah. Exactly the same user experience, except there's no Dropbox cloud. You run your own cloud. It's a private cloud and it's on your Synology disk station. You can access it locally on your network. It's smart enough that you can access it when you're not local on your network because it just comes in through your router and lets you talk and you can have multiple team members using it or multiple family members, however you want to configure it and all, all that stuff. And it's it's awesome. And of course, you know, you're not paying monthly for storage because you own the drives, you own the box where all of this stuff is stored and it's private. No one has access to your that's data. Cool. Yep. So that's one of them. And then the other app that I use is it, they call it Office. And if you've ever used like Google, uh, Google Docs or Google Sheets or any of that stuff online, it's that. But again, you're not hosting it with Google. You're hosting it on your own thing. And, and actually, the new business that we started, we decided, you know, what, we don't want Google to have any of this stuff. So why don't we just host, host it on my uh, disk station? And it's been stellar. We have all these spreadsheets that we're tracking things on. And we know we're the only ones that can get to it. It's fantastic. So that's that's my uh it's you know it's just one of those things. I do you use Synology stuff, Shannon? Is that no, I don't. No, nope. okay, yep, it's great. I have, I mean, I've got a you know home server sitting here on a Mac sure. Mini that we you know sync and do all kinds of stuff with. But uh, no, oh, this sounds great. Mm-hmm. This sounds very uh, very useful. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a great thing about these kind of lists because you you always find new things. You think, oh, I got this and it's great, and I got that, but you know, finding out new uh, uh, resources like that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm going to bring it out, and w- so we can both talk about. It. I think it's both on our on our lists, and l- let's talk about Slack for a couple of minutes. Definitely, uh, we've we've talked about it here a lot on the show because we use it to manage the show and to manage communication with our other team members and things. And it, it, on my path to Slack was, you know. I got in business when we didn't even have a website, you know, and then we got a website and the or emails and, and then we had our own mail server in house. And, uh, uh, I think I'm going to stop you right there. At, if yes. you're, con- if you are running a business or if you're starting a business and you are considering running your own mail server that you manage in house, as opposed to your own mail server that you pay someone, you know, like a cloud service to manage, do not do that. Do not run your own yes, mail server in the house. It, like, <laughs> correct. I, I am a geek. I love things like that. I, like yeah. even the geeky part of me wants no part of that. It, it's an awful right. 
awful experience. I, I, anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt, but. And now, yeah. And yeah. now there's, back then it wasn't as many, but now there's no. tons of different options to manage your, your, mm-hmm. your email offsite. And it's great if you, you can use. Google, if you want them to manage yeah. your domain, all Fast that kind of mail, stuff. There's whatever. all kinds of different yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fast Mail. So uh, then, you know, we, we uh, as things grew, you know, we started using uh, Instant Messenger, uh, AOL Instant Messenger back in the day and and used that for years for intercompany communication. Uh, you know, it wasn't secure, but it was easy. And it it replaced email within our, our uh, building, if you will. And yeah. it was it was great and it was instant and responses and it was more fluid than emailing, you know, the office next door, or the guy in the warehouse, uh, when you needed a fast response and you couldn't talk to him. Uh, but Slack is at a whole nother level of, uh, of those things together and in, in a combination of things that includes, you know, instant messaging, uh, team communication, file hosting, um, just, uh, and plugins to just anything you could, you can think of customer service. You can use, there's chat apps you can run on your website that, that connect into Slack. Uh, I mean, on and on and on, there's just hundreds of different integrations with Slack. And for, for a lot of small businesses, um, you can use it for free. Uh, there's a, a very powerful free version that doesn't cost anything per month. And, you know, I think the limitation is 10,000 messages and then you, you know, you don't get access to those anymore. Yeah. Uh, but, but the beauty of it for me is it's one centralized hub for all my business communication. I have different companies listed on my I even I run a nonprofit through it as well. And I, I got all these, folks on Slack is like, look, we're not going to text groups. If, if you're using texting to send out group messages, y- y- let me tell you, this is so much better, oh. so much more reliable. Uh, and uh, it, it's such a better communication system than sending out bulk text. Cause you know, especially if you're a, a bunch of iPhone users and then you have a, that one or two dreaded Android users that are not on, uh, you know, Apple's message. messaging yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. It can really mess things up and communicating and, um, you know, receipts and this and that. So getting everybody to Slack, it, it, it's, it's powerful. It's I have, powerful. You need to use it to really see it. I, I have gotten very close to uh, moving all of my family's communication to Slack as opposed yeah. to, you know, the group message chats and all that stuff. It It's... Um, it, I, I don't know why we haven't done it yet, to be perfectly honest, because every single one of us uses Slack. Like my, my wife obviously uh, does a bunch of work with, with me. She works with us. So she has Slack for the businesses. Yep. My daughter uses Slack at her high school for she's the editor of their school magazine. And so they use Slack all the time. So, yeah, we should just have another Slack group. That's the family. It would be good. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. A, it, it, it is one of these life changing apps that, you know, we will be talking about for years. Years. Yep. Uh, if you're not using it now, you really owe it to yourself to download it uh, and and get yourself familiar with it. You know, we talked uh, on the show last week about using it to interact with customers or vendors. And, you know, uh, I, I think it's a great idea. If you're a consultant, you know, you can uh, use Slack to communicate with your customers or just, just there's a myriad of ways that you can use it. And there's a desktop, you know, uh, application as well as of course on your phones and the notifications. And it's, it's, a it's, I think it's right up there with like FileMaker as far as how robust and flexible it is yeah. and how easy, easy it is to use for non-technical or non-program type people, uh, to, to gain access to some really great technical, um, capabilities. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. I, 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 That's cool. I don't disagree. I, I have one more on my list that actually wasn't on my list, but it's Trello and Trello allows you to track tasks is really the best way that I can uh, I can describe it. We use it. And it's really interesting. I, I thought about it because I mentioned my daughter and she's the editor of her, her school paper, school magazine. And uh, we weren't using anything in it here at Mac Observer to sort of manage articles that people were working on. I mean, we had no we had no official centralized way of of doing it. 
And uh, and my, I was talking to Skylar and she was like, oh, yeah, we use Trello. It's great because you build what you do is you build these little cards for tasks for us. It's articles. But it, I also now use it with another business where we're doing uh, some programming stuff. And so it's like, OK, well, you know, there's this feature we want, this feature we want. And you can then take these cards and move them around from like ideas to being worked on to, you know, published and and. Or whatever, you know, and you can have all kinds of different uh, statuses and, and things. And it's really easy to move these cards around and just get not only a visual at a glance, you know, idea of how are we doing, but but also t really easy to manage and get dig right in. And just like Slack, it the free service is very powerful. Uh, and you could like we're able to use the free service at Mac Observer. Uh, for if that's any oh, indication. Cool. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. if, if the, the way they limit it is by how many things you can add to it. So uh, like you said, Slack has add ons for, you know, all kinds of different things. So does Trello and it's even got a Slack add on and it's got a calendar add on and these other you know, things. So there's there's a limited number of those that you can do on the free version. And then if you want to do more, well, now you pay. And that's I mean, everybody needs to have a business model. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, but yeah, Trello's pretty cool. You got to check it out. So, yeah, I like that's it. great. Yep. I definitely do that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, my next one is is pretty basic, but it, it is right up there. And it, I don't think it should be overshadowed. And, and that's Excel um, and or Google Sheets. I, I really kind of use them interchangeably now, depending upon if I'm collaborating with other people, I, I always do it in, uh, you know, up on with Google docs or Google sheets. And if I'm just doing it on my own, I typically use Excel, yeah. but I do so much with, uh, large lists of the whatever, but typically products and manifests and different things and being able to, uh, put data into Excel and, uh, you know, manipulate it and then present it to other people uh, to show what you want to do or how something happened and things. It, it, the impact and on your day to day business is is dramatic. And you know, and it's been there forever. And it's just a basic. Okay, it's just a spreadsheet. But but I I'm in it every day, yep. every single day. I'm in, I'm in Excel. Um, I hardly ever use Word anymore. You know, I I don't do much of that. But I use you know I let. I let pages uh, on the Mac, but, uh, but Excel really, uh, excels <laughs> yeah. putting all your stuff together and just tracking things. And, and I use it, for, you know, it either online, you know, I use it for everything from like say nonprofit fundraising stuff to business deals with manifests and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, it's, it's on my list. That's great. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I'm the same way. I often say that I think with Excel or I, and I, I like yeah. you, I use Excel sort of as a blanket term. I think with a spreadsheet is, is really what it is. And a lot of it these days is Google docs or, or sorry, Google sheets or, or Synology's office. Cause it has the same thing in it. But, um, but yeah, it like, it allows me to just format numbers and throw things out really quickly and see what they look like and see how they all interact. And yeah, it's, it's, and, and you're right. It's not just numbers. You, I, I use it for lists yeah. and, and things like that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's true. It's tremendous. It's I yep. love it. Cool. Uh, Any more on your list? I, I, I have a few more, but I could, I could, uh, you know, cut it down. If no, it, uh, time I, I is do. An issue for I us. have, I have another, um, sort of category and that's image manipulation. Uh, I use like the, I am not a designer, right? I'm, I'm really happy that even though they're not a sponsor of this episode, I'm, I'm happy to, to know that go designer go exists for that reason. But I do like mess with pictures a lot, you know, for, uh, sure. you know, for like article images or wh whatever, I'm always doing things. And there's an app in Photoshop was always a really expensive and B far too complex. Like it didn't work with my brain. Photoshop didn't. Uh, Pixelmator, however, is yeah, both a Mac and it. iPhone app that does. And I can do I, I can really make people think that I'm a wizard with with pictures with uh, Pixelmator. And it's inexpensive. I think it's uh, thirty nine bucks or something for the Mac and. Uh, yeah, I think le so. Less than that for the iPhone. I mean, it's it's just like, yeah, 
it, short money and super easy to use and, and just works. It, you can just do the things you want to do. So I, I, that's on my list. And then a companion app slash service that I use, but it's an app that you download is called image optim O P T I M. And what it's built to do is if you do anything with the web, uh, you want your images to be as lightweight and lean as possible. When you create an image with, you know, an app like even Pixelmator or whatever, it puts things like a thumbnail preview in and all this other stuff and some metadata so that you can know when you created it and all that stuff. And all of that adds to the to the size of that image. And when someone visits your website, they have to download all that stuff, even though they're never going to see the thumbnail. They're never going to look at the, the you know metadata or anything like that. And image optim strips all that crap out and will also, if you set it, uh, compress the image down. And everything that I do, I just drop it on image optim and it crunches through. And it's usually saving somewhere between 10 and like 60 percent of the size of a, an, an image. And it just takes care of it right away. So those are my my two the two things that I use almost every day for m manipulating images. So. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, I'll combine a couple of these. These are these are a little more a little fuzzy, but no, no less important. Um, one thing that's been really important to me over the years uh, for my business career, my sanity, uh, and my productivity is music. And being able to integrate or, or give yourself the ability to listen to music while you work and while you. Uh, uh, yeah, while you work, uh, it, it I think it's a, a a game changer in the fact that you know if you're jacked up and you got to get a lot done, you can pump yourself up and get going. Like it's just like with workout music. You go to the gym, you're going to be you know hustling this kind of thing. Same thing with with this. Or if you really need to be contemplative and creative, you can you know there's a different soundtrack to each of those tasks, but. Uh, there is a soundtrack and uh, being able to listen in even just on a low level in the background, I really believe it's important and allows uh, it, it unleashes something inside uh, certainly me, but I think all of us that um, makes us better people, better business people. Um, and it may sound kind of cheesy, but, uh, but it's really been an important thing for, for my uh, business career. I, I will agree. I, I, um, if I'm not listening to music while I'm doing, and I'll call it busy work, but it, it, it like, I don't do anything for the sake of doing it. Right. I mean, there's yeah. always a goal, but, but there's a lot of stuff where you just at your desk. Like if I have to go through my inbox, right. And, and I've got like a lot of things to do. If I don't have music going, I get, I get way too easily distracted. Whereas if I do have music going, I, like I can, I can focus. I forget that like, I, like hours will go by. I mean, not, I don't lose myself or anything, but yeah. you know, I'm able to focus and, and lose those distractions. And it's because the music sort of fills that void in my brain. Anyway, it sounds like yours too, Shannon, where it, yep. you know, it's enough uh, engagement to kind of keep me from, from losing my focus. It, and so it really helps, but it, immensely so. And I, and I catch myself like, Oh yeah, crap. I got to turn on iTunes, you know, and, and, and get something going. And usually it's like, for me, it serves double purpose. Cause I'll always have some show or some songs I need to learn for something. So I just have that going in the background. And oh that yeah, really, for that sure. really helps. Yeah. 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 But it doesn't matter. I just need something going. Yep. So. Yeah. And, yeah. and I would argue that you need to, expand extend that uh benefit throughout your organization whether you're in a building or whatever or you know somehow integrate some music it it, it you know it's it's powerful and even yeah. in your lobby and it mean helps set the tone helps set your culture uh you know and and you know we used to design playlists that oh, hey it's monday man we got to get rolling and get everybody going and you you know pumping it throughout the you know your warehouse or you know and letting your team listen to the music that they want to not your totally. favorite music or yeah. you know whatever it's really important as long as it's appropriate you know whatever and it's not offending anybody you know that but uh it, it i think it's a real big benefit and music is really powerful uh in work in a workplace yep for sure I, yeah 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 that's it's ironic that you're the one that put music on the list and not me 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. 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 So, and then the last thing I, I have more stuff on my list, but I don't want to take the whole, we'll, we'll do another show, you know, maybe every six months or so. But the last thing that I think we often miss, and it is a tool, and I've tried to use it more and more uh, the older I've got, is free time. And what I mean by that is giving yourself permission to stop and just screw around for a few minutes, 15 minutes, uh, whatever it is during the day. Um, and what I do is I set, um, uh, you know, I set myself a task list. Okay. And when I get done with this, I'm going to give myself five minutes and I'm either going to go, whatever I get outside and do whatever, you know, and, uh, uh, like I typically take the dog out, you know, at some point, but I set some bars and once I achieve those, great. You know, I've been an adult long enough. Now I can go mess around. Uh, whether you want to check social media, whether you want to go read the news, uh, wh whatever it is, but that, um, permission to disconnect for, uh, a small period of time, uh, you know, whatever time you want, half hour, hour, it has been really important for me because uh, I'm a big fan of carrots, you know, out in front of you, things to achieve. And so I can always, oh, great. I'm going to be able to take a break here and go down and get something to eat or whatever it is. So I, I think giving yourself those pockets of free time is a great way to manage your day because if you just, you know, if you just grind it out and you can't stop, I mean, you become less creative, you know, less flexible in your thought process and, uh, maybe not as approachable as a manager. Mm. And, and I think that free time can also include getting up out of your office and, and walking around, you know, and, and talking to your people. So make sure that's part of your day. Uh, you know, especially when you, you're a manager or business owner, you've got to get out and, and give yourself that free time. Yeah. I, I find for, for me, it's, it's like, you know, I'll, I'll be whatever at my desk or doing whatever I'm doing and just, you know, crunch, crunch, crunch. And you sort of pack your brain full. Like, this is how I think of it. You pack your brain full and you're fully engaged. Right. And then when you finally, when I finally disengage and, and just do something, you know, mindless, like, like you said, going for a walk, taking a shower, driving, any of those things where you're not actively engaged, that's when my brain gets to go. <sighs> And the idea is that, you know, we're sort of suppressed by this influx of data that you're just kind of packing in there now yeah. are free and they can come out. And I and, you know, like that's why I'll set, you know, on some emails, a 10 or sometimes even a 30 minute timer. It's like, OK, I've I've worked on it. I've focused on it. I've created it. I think it's good. And now I just kind of need to let that go. And sometimes, yeah. you know, percolate. It's percolate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's you got to give your brain time yep. to percolate. Yeah. That's and and you can't, yep. Yep. you know, you, and meditation can is an is an intentional way of doing that. Right. But uh, but it's sure. not the only way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for years, call, you know, I always felt like. Yeah. Uh, for years, I used to just kind of, oh, you know, you weren't as productive today. This you didn't get. But as I became, uh, you know, more mature business owner, uh, I think a better manager, uh, not always worried about what my uh, coworkers or employees thought I was doing, you know, because I always felt, oh, I want to be as productive as them or I want to be able to do this. But it's different. And so when you give yourself the first part is giving yourself permission to do it and then actually doing it and yeah. feeling good about it. It really can open things up for you. And, uh, it, it has helped my success uh, immensely. So, yeah. So yeah. we'd love to hear what you guys do. I mean, w w what are some of the tools that you use? Um, you know, reach out, let us know at feedback at business .co or, you know, start a conversation in the small business support group at business .co slash Facebook. Yeah. It's yeah. been a fun show. This has been really fun. I, I, yeah, I I'm very eager to hear stuff. what yeah. ideas percolate out of your heads now that Shannon and I have kind of, you know, barfed all our ideas at you. So, and I, and hopefully you <laughs> yes. you picked some some advice up here too. There's a lot of things we yeah. mentioned in this yeah. episode. Yeah, there is. Very, very cool. cool, very cool, folks. All right. Well, we will. Uh, that's all we got for today. But we will see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Next week. Yeah. Next week. Take it easy, everybody. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast for one of those great tools and keep living that charmed life. Yeah.